Okay, this is a kind of a podcast slash conversation and it's part of the Trav Vision Media Group. It's on history in general and I say in general because I'm joined with Dillian Foley. Dillian, Dillian Foley. And I keep getting his name wrong no matter how long I live. Or it might be too long if I keep getting it wrong. But I'm joined with Dillian Foley who is an historian and also what we would call a member of the settler community. Um, but what has got my interest with Dylan is that he's quite radical, I think. We're soon going to find out, I guess. Anyway, I'll let Dylan introduce you and tell you a bit about himself. Dylan, thank you for joining me for starters. Um, In your house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bernard. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, historian, archaeologist, west of Ireland. Um, uh, Sligonian. Yeah. Uh, radical is one way of putting it. I don't know. Uh, maybe. What does a historian do? Into uh, Star Wars. Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. They're into science fiction stuff. So historians, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> some of them. Some of them. Yeah. Study the future. To study yeah. the future by yeah. le- learning from the past, is it? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. But come here. What do you do? Like, obviously, you, you have a title. You went to school. You went to a university, I imagine, or something. Yeah. yeah. Some no, I was just thinking. You're you're right about Star Wars. Star Wars took place a long, 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 long ago in a galaxy far, far away. So that does make sense. There you have it. Yeah. We might uh, we might take that part out because people might know Dylan, and then they might think he's a right fruit cake altogether, <laughs> 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 and all this didn't have gone the way. So will not. So, an historian, right? I mean, uh, yeah, technically I'm an archaeologist. I'm a field archaeologist. I did study history. What's the difference? Uh, we dig things up. Um, like a graveyard? I've, I've dug in graveyards, oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Accident, and this, accidentally. And this is a pre-recorded, so it's point is me shouting for help. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, dug in graveyards. Not, I don't recommend it. To be honest with you, but it sometimes it's done. Yeah. What did you um, searching for? In a graveyard. Yeah. Uh, we're well, we're not searching. We 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 know usually when we're in a graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you be digging them for? Why do you be digging? Ah, uh, well, now you see sometimes graveyards. Uh, generally, they're not. Generally, they're avoided. Yeah, you're right. Generally, they're avoided. Um, but uh, what happens sometimes? The, the graveyard I ran into, we ran into a graveyard that wasn't meant to Accidentally be. Accidentally, with a yes, shovel. Yes, yeah, yeah. There wasn't meant to be a graveyard there. Let's put it that oh, way. Oh God! Yeah. <laughs> so it was, you went it was under, place. It was under, under the pavement. Oh, I had no idea it was there. No. I just image in my head that you were all these headstones around you. And you were yeah, yeah, away. yeah. No, no, not, <laughs> not like, that. like that. Thank God. No, no, no. It was a corner of. Um, it's like some, someone's front garden and the corner and, and the corner of a, a road. You know the. the uh, up in Bally Shannon, to be honest with you, but uh, the um, uh, that would have happened a lot if you lift the pavement yeah. stones, there was people right under it, like you know what wow. I mean? Wow, I mean, bodies, like obviously, yeah, yeah, time. yeah. Anyway, there was supposed to be about the guests, the guests, there was about 20, and um, you know, and we were sent in, and then the guests, then they reckoned, then we, then the guest, there was about 40. <laughs> they were they were being optimistic, they thought there was only a few to remove. Wow, um, then we were up to about 100, and then the guest, there was about out oh, of can't be any more than two, it was only a small place, like you know what I mean, but. Was it a mass grave or what? Oh, 1,200 and odd bodies later, we were still there. <laughs> My God. Yeah, it's not something I want to... So, so it wasn't an official grave or anything? Was it not a, no, no, no. Well, it was... A, it was um, How did he die? No, it was, it was. There had been a church there. Oh, there had been a church? Yeah, yeah. There had been a, a very old church, um, 8th century, um, an ancient uh, Irish uh, church from 7th or 8th century. And, well, and uh, right, right on, right on the Ballyshannon River. What do you call that river? The was it a Christian church? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there had been a church. The foundation of it was there, and people were buried there. They were buried with um, little uh, crystals, uh, with um, quartz crystals in their hands. Some of them, some of them had weapons. Uh, still, uh, you know, arrow, he- arrowheads, arrowheads, things like that inside them. You know what I mean? And who would get? Who would be? Say off of the arrowheads and something out went to probably soldiers. Yeah, guys killed in, in battle maybe or something like that. I don't the know. Guys with was, the crystal, do you know? Uh, that that, that was that sometimes seems to have been a tradition. There was a shrine thing beside the church beside the church building. There was a small box made of stones, kind of if you know what I mean. And um, a bit like you take a candle at the holy well type of thing. Someone they seem to have been take. There was it was full of little quartz pebbles, oh, yeah. and in some cases little beach stones, and they seem to have put them in the hands of people when they buried them. 
I've heard that courts sometimes seem to be a tradition. Well, the Irish funerals are a bit like that. It's traditional as well. They put the, maybe a coin and yeah. or things like that. I know the travel graveyards a lot where they would, uh, when it's all done and dusted, done and dusted, but uh, they would throw the tie in. Right, yeah. The yeah. tradition we have, I've seen it for years. Like we, if I want to finish, we throw the tie in or mark respect. Yeah. Just a family, more or less. I wouldn't be giving them oh, yeah, throwing yeah. the tie in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, be an expensive funeral. <laughs> well, this was this was packed. They were all put in ro- whatever. Yeah, there were rows. I mean, they were buried very shallow as well. I mean, Irish that old graveyard like that now they'd be buried in shrouds. It'd be like what you'd see in the Middle East, you know, like um, we wrapped into a tight into a shroud wow. and buried fairly shallow, you know. Um, there you go. Yeah. So yeah, that's what archaeo. Well, archaeologists don't always dig in those places. Right? I mean, most of the time we're digging holes. Uh, we don't necessarily. It's not as exciting as that, but. Um, yeah, I have um, yeah. a good friend of mine who did a travel lad. He's a, I think he's a degree or, or something in archaeology mm. and uh, obsessed with history. Oh, yeah. Zines, you name it. Rock in, the, rock in a field. Why you call it Rock in a field? He'd tell me it was a whole castle. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. he'd be able to tell me the history, but never the else. And, uh, and believe it or not, what I found a lot is um, even Irish music. Because I never really liked Irish music. I remember before I'd be in the van, I mean, my father would be in the van going to Mayo. It could be another relative there, and I'd be in the middle of the young at the time. And all that hiddly diddly fiddly music was coming on, like, and it would give you the shivers. Because it was just wasn't nice on my ears. I didn't like it. I was, I was a young lad anyway. But after that, anyway, because my father was very keen to listen to it, and he enjoyed it anyway. So every so often I would see my hand up to switch it maybe to FM radio or something, and he'd switch it back. But he'd off to himself. But eventually, that would pass, and he'd forget himself. And then the death notice would come on. And there'd be several people read out before. Oh, no, no, no. And he'd jump in and he'd, like a ninja. He'd switch off the radio pretty fast. Mm. So my other relatives would say, because he was listening, because he would know some of the people. He said, why did you do that first? I was listening to it. He said, where is it? I'd be afraid of my life, my name would come out on it. <laughs> 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 so of course, right. we, we, we couldn't yeah. be looking at him. But um, yeah, yeah. in terms of tradition, but, um, stuff like that, there's a lot of it. And when I was at school, most time I ever came alive in a classroom is when they were talking about people like Finn McCool and the hounds and the hunting and all these clang fights and history like that because it felt so familiar. But when I went into geographic stuff for English invasions and Cromwell, it was, it was sickening. It was just something not right with it, a lot of it. I know it, it, it allegedly it all happened, but there was something more missing in it. And I felt all my life the travellers, even if I didn't understand fully what it was to be a traveller myself, knew I was in the history books, but I wasn't in the classroom yeah. in that current time. It felt very strange to me. You mean you didn't... You, you mean you didn't... <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about Star Wars a minute ago. <laughs> yeah. That's Dylan's uh, uh, computer. <laughs> yeah, so I did... Uh, when I went... Uh, I, well so when I went to college I did archaeology and I did uh, IT I did computers believe it or not so wow. that, that might explain that yeah yeah, yeah okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, you're, co- you're covered <laughs> just, just thought I should say that yeah, yeah. Um, do you enjoy doing what you do uh, yeah well I do it anyway well at this stage now I, I, I just do it anyway I suppose I don't even think about it I, I, I'm not I haven't dug in a while now you know what I mean I have to say I kind of haven't um, been out digging which is no harm to be honest especially in the winter um, my brother still is though. I did say earlier that uh, I was looking for an indoor job uh, as as radical, uh, and I say that. And the reason I'm saying all right, let's be honest with you, I didn't believe eighty percent of the nonsense that was coming out anything I've ever heard of an historian that came from the settled community. And that's not being disrespectful to you. Um, and I know I'm kind of generalising because I'm only going by the people that I've seen on TV, heard on the radio, or some of the stupid books that were forced to listen to at school none of it made sense to me and it didn't make no sense to me why was an Irish person uh, talking like this and why did every one of these historians skip over the fact that there was Irish travellers on this land and we weren't called Irish travellers at different periods of time we were called different names but what remained the same was our identity and our culture uh, and our traditions so regardless of what name we came at different stages and different periods of history we felt we were still one people connected with this country. And although we found it very difficult to prove that we were actually from this country, because it never, anywhere in the history books, mentioned or made even reference to us, 
uh, made reference to Celtic warrior and this sort and that kind, which was good and well. But uh, I was uh, looked out the window and I could have seen that with my relations, boxing heads with each other or <laughs> yes. uh, making disputes or whatever it might be, yeah. or making up. Sort of feeling it or something like that. Yeah, it? absolutely. Yeah. I, I could see that every day of my life. But yeah. once I went into the schools, it stopped and everything I heard about history did not make sense because it didn't feel right. Yeah. Do you think so I need medical help? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. So you're not the only one, and I can, I can yeah. That experience is interesting. It's, it, it makes sense, doesn't it? Because um, uh, the school system is not. Um, the school system was created in the 1830s in order to, and you know, very much in in we we we've we've talked about this before about language and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, the idea with with the church and the English and the church and things like that was to create, you know, English was the language that this primary school system was to was to get people to speak. And um, so anyway, to put it this way, the, that system, the school system that you're describing had crea was created under the British Empire days of Irish history. You know, it's a British school. It's like, it's like what you were saying earlier. It's like, I can't believe, I can't, I, I was going to say something as a joke. Like, I can't believe, you know, you, you mean you didn't enjoy the... the the Home Rule Act of eighteen seventy eight and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, but but, but, but who but who did? You know? Yeah. I mean, I. No, believe it or not, I, I yeah. might say Trampers, right? Because that's what we have been become to be identified as. Yeah. And a whole misconception about if you don't travel, you're not a traveller, which is the same thing as saying to somebody from Ireland, if you cannot speak Irish, you are not Irish. Yes. That is not the case. Only because you might be missing or have a, one factor. It doesn't constitute who you are as an identity. So a lot of settled people miss, miss that. They assumed if we didn't travel, we're not traveling. We're all failed, settled people. And we didn't cut it and we're kicked out during the famine. And there's slight elements to towards the famine part of it. But failed, we never felt in our lives. Yeah. And I think we paid a heavy, heavy, heavy price for that. Because we die much younger than the settled community. Um, we lived in some, the ways that we live, we are forced to live in some of the worst conditions that you would not, you wouldn't be able to sell this land. I've often wondered how the hell they even sold it in the first place because they put it beside power plants, they put it beside railway tracks, they put it in swamps, they put it way outside of the settled community. Almost they were ashamed of us, um, whatever it was, and I could never truly understood why it got to that extreme to do that to the people. Yeah. But the more I learn from people like you, which I've never learned from any other historian, so I'm pitting you against all them and the other historians now, mm -hmm. just to let you know that. They might come looking for you. Yeah. But they seem to me to be very, 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 very nice and pleasant almost to the British. Um, it's almost like, okay, they were here, they did bad things, but at least they left behind their language and their systems and now we're all used to it. Let's yeah. get on, everybody. Yeah, so there's, yeah, exactly. So there's a, you got the British. And when I mentioned the British, so we have to... We have to call a spade a spade. We have to talk about what things come from. It's not to get at them as such. Do you know what I mean? But it's you know well that's yeah. a, that's a different day's work. Uh, they came and went, and as you as you describe, um, independence didn't solve these problems in Ireland. Like independent, so called you know independence came along, or to some extent came along, but the systems that were put in place during the empire that were created to uh, change people's language. You know, like at that time you went into the school, you got a was there a a thing called a stick or a tally thing or something they used to give kids that if every time they spoke Irish it was marked or whatever I can't remember the story but um, uh, people were uh, the policy was to change people's culture and had been since the 16th since the late 16th century oh yeah that's the dirty you know, 1600s or something since Spencer there was something Pope. on television a while back um, I think John Connor and some joints and a few Mike Madonna brilliant people it was uh, Blood of the Travellers mm. And they were talking, I got, it wasn't an historian as such, but um, he seemed to think he knew his history anyway. But he was part of the historical DNA tracking and this kind of stuff. And he was saying there was a divergence at some point, I think it was the 16, 1700s, where travellers broke away from settled people. But that doesn't make sense to us. No. So that doesn't make sense in history, historical terms either, because what we're what we're what people now call a settled community is not what is not what Ireland was like.